the train, headed back to my new home from my old home, two homes, two worlds so different, both in me. The home of my childhood, the streets I used to walk, the faces I used to know, they haunt the empty places in my heart here. Every footstep and echo of the life I used to lead, wondering when it would get better, I used to pass on by these streets. I look out the window of the train, I see her house, I see the house I lived in for five days after I ran, I see myself looking at me from the window, listening to the roar of the trains, the hum of the heater, the pressing silence from words unsaid, tears unshed, the fear echoing in the empty places in my heart, my old heart. I see her standing there, I feel her standing beside me, I feel her rage, her judgment, her sorrow, it echoes in the empty places in my heart, I hold my breath and wait for it to pass. I pass by. I leave this place behind. I leave her behind. I leave my sorrow behind. I remember what it was like, wondering if I would live to see tomorrow, keeping time by my heart, waiting for it to stop. My heart still beats. It sounds like the wheels of the train on the tracks. The empty spaces in my heart feel less empty as the train picks up speed. We are going together to my new home. Home, home, forward, onward. The empty spaces in my heart are no longer empty. They are filled with hope, with love, with the promise of tomorrow. The train pulls into the station. I pick up my things. I pass on by. And this is the second one, entitled Generational Trauma. Long before I was born, a white couple held a brown baby. They gave her a new name. They gave her a new home. I don't doubt they loved her. I don't doubt they raised her the best they could. But in giving and taking, they erased pieces of her. They filled them with their love but in some ways it wasn't enough. She wasn't a passive player, however, and soon she had joined the army, but she dropped out to have her first child, her daughter, a daughter whose father disappeared from the annals of our history and slipped away. But she kept going and kept working. She met another man, and soon she had another baby. In a Virginia hospital two months before Y2K, a white couple held a brown and white baby. The woman clutched her toddler and watched them slip away. The couple gave the baby a new name, the couple gave the baby a new home, and I don't doubt they loved me, but I don't doubt that they raised me the best they could, but in giving and taking, the trauma echoes down like a scar on a sapling, the pain shows in my growth rings. Sometimes I wonder what it would have been like if I looked into the face of my mother and saw a brown face reflected like mine. Would my father have called me a moon face if he too shared her swell in his cheeks? Would my mother covet my skin if she was dyed with the same earth as me? Sometimes I wonder what they could teach me if their tongues spoke like my great grandparents, if they could show me the things I've lost, if they could show me how to keep my heritage alive. Maybe it would have been the same. Maybe it would have been worse. But my brown and white heart wonders what would happen if I could go back and restitch the dropped loops of my family tapestry. It's too late for that. It's too late to go back. But it's not too late to learn where I come from. It's not too late to seek love and light. I cannot undo the wounds that bleed onto my history books, gumming up the pages that their words will never reach me. There beats in me a hundred words I will never understand, written in a tongue my birth mother never got the chance to speak. But I can try to listen, and so I will. Thank you. Woo!